Tuggy McTugface, Electric Disco Biscuit, and Doug were three of the names that didn't make the cut for this, the world's first all-electric tugboat. It's right here, and it's called Sparky. Yep, it's a world first, but it won't be the last, with this all-electric tugboat costing just one-third of what a diesel tug costs to operate, all while cutting out around 465 tonnes of carbon dioxide every year. It's also just as strong as its diesel companions, it's quiet, it's very low maintenance, and this vessel will pay itself off in about 10 years or less if fuel goes up again. But enough talking, let's jump aboard and check it out. Okay, what is this thing? What is this giant McDonald's symbol? <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, what we call the staple. Uh, that is where uh, we pass the tow line through. Uh, and this is where we are standing on, is the business end of the tug. Okay. Pushing and pulling happens from here. Obviously, when we are assisting the ships to berth alongside, this massive fendering thing over there use, is used for uh, pushing. We land on the ship and push and 70 tons uh, annotation comes from there. So when we do full power push, we apply a thrust of 70 tons. Is 70 tons a lot? 70 tons is a lot. They're okay. one of the larger side uh, of the tugs, but we do get, uh, ships are getting bigger and bigger, aren't they? So you need bigger tugs to assist the bigger ships. How long does Sparky typically run on a charge? Uh, it can run for four jobs, three to four jobs, uh, on a full charge from 90 to 20%. Uh, uh, we can go up to two and a half hours, no, three I hours. When we came on, there was a lot of crew on board. Uh, that seems like a lot of seamen for a small tug. <laughs> Those are all training and familiarizing because it's a new tug. When in operation, it only operates two people. Two people? Two people. One really? skipper, one engineer. Okay, what does the engineer do? Because it's got no engine. <laughs> but it's got batteries, a whole heap of them. Uh, obviously, when you go down, then uh, you'll have uh, converters, DC to AC uh, buses, they need to monitor all that. And then uh, the battery management system is also there, but you need an engineer to understand the outputs of the battery management system. Can we see inside the cockpit? Of course you can. And because I'm 12 years old, I had to ring the bell. Unfortunately, I couldn't afford the rights to In the Navy by the village people. Permission to come aboard, Captain? <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Ed. Hi, I'm Gavin. So this is Captain Ed, and we're going to be departing in a second. What's the first thing you've got to do when we depart? Yeah, lift the gangway, um, tell the crew that I'm um, ready to go, make sure that the engines are ready to go, um, put the power on. It's really that simple. Where's the, where's the big red start button or green start um, button? Big green start buttons, because there's two. One for the starboard one, one for the port. Oh, okay. So just to um, just wait for the engine to say it's okay, okay. and uh, just pop the button. That's it. Yeah. Which controls the um, the direction of the motors and which controls the the, the thrust and the the winch itself? Okay. Um, this is for the winch. Okay. So you get um, um, the brakes, and um, you can hold the line back in just with you know. It's really quite simple, but it's new. This system is quite it's just unique to Sparky. The thing with tuck driving is it's quite different from um, conventional boat handling is and you haven't got a steering wheel yeah so it, 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 it just changes everything it makes it really interesting so <laughs> no, I, I saw I had to google them they're they're, they're like motors but they're, they they yeah, spin. they spin the entire so, the entire system so, turns around yeah so you um, so this controls the direction of the entire motor yeah. with the propeller and yep yeah, exactly that's how, how it works and then um, this is for uh, the thrust so the more you put on the more revs you've got okay which is this is your captain's seat, I take it? Yeah. Can I sit in it? Oh, of course. Okay. Good point. <laughs> yeah. There's the lumbar support there. <laughs> oh, are you serious? Yeah, yeah. So there's the lumbar support. Oh, there's a lumbar. Yep. And then, excuse me. Do I turn my head and cough? Pump that up and then. Um, oh, look at that. It's, it's going up. It's going up. <laughs> Stop it. This is comfortable. It is. Oh, you've got foot rest and everything. Yeah. You can adjust you can just... that for height. You can adjust this for height. But, but you can't steer from here unless you've got like Mr. Bean with okay. uh, some broomsticks and stuff. Are you serious? Yeah, let's go. Onwards. Engage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've got foot pedals and everything. Yep. Oh, it all makes sense now. So oh, this is wicked. Anyway, enough of me clowning around. I was soon sent back to economy class so that Sparky could be untied in order for us to head into the harbour to check out yeah. the vessel's power and manoeuvrability. Harbour control, Sparky. But even casting off was eerily silent, with the loudest thing being the air conditioning system. No fumes, no vibration, no... Nothing. Yeah. 
It is. It, it, it's it, surreal. It is, eh? We left the wharves quietly and cleanly, limited to five knots, despite Sparky being able to do 12. Yeah. Is, is 12 knots fast for a tug, or is that, is that normal? Or is um, it's quite normal. All our tugs can go just around 12 knots. Yeah. Okay, so you're not looking for speed when you're tugging? Nah, it's, it's I can more like rephrase power. that, love. <laughs> <laughs> Did you call or it tugging? Or, or is it tug When boating? you're doing a job. Okay, right. When you're doing a job. Okay. Once away from the wharves, we headed out to meet the diesel tug Hauraki, which had just finished a job where the crew had a bit of a surprise in store for us. Okay, they're going to do something interesting. Yeah. Watch this. Okay, so what's happening here? So we're going to go bow to bow with the other tug. Oh, no way. And we're going to go into a spin. That's if we managed to decide which way we're spinning. <laughs> okay. And after putting on a show for everyone in the office buildings, the diesel tug Hauraki departed in a cloud of smoke. Oh, oh look at that. Oh, look at the <laughs> cancer. Not with this tug, not with this. So uh, HMS Benson and Hedges over there. <laughs> <laughs> and the next all-electric party piece was, as it's officially called, a donut. So what percentage of the power are we using? Gosh, that is um, turning. <laughs> I've, just, I've just gone up to um, 75. 75? Yeah, it was at 50, so now it's 75. It's not full yet, but give it, some. give it some. Okay, he asked for it. Yeah. Hang on. That's it. That's full power. Oh, she's speeding up. Oh. Far up. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> that is insane. Oh, okay. God, it's getting upset. Abandon ship. <laughs> what are the alarms mean? This one is bridge navigation watchkeeper alarm. So. It's like a dead man alarm for him. Okay, okay, that's so it. Every 12 minutes, okay, it, it tells you, hey, so are like you alive? The, everything's okay alarm? Yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah. So the alarm yeah. is caused by, because you went over five knots. <laughs> over five knots, but in a circle. Yeah, it's your bridge. Uh, okay. navigation okay. alarm. So okay. it activates it and it's like checking, oh, you're going five knots and over. All right. Are you <laughs> intending to do that? We put Sparky through its paces, spinning around the other way, and despite it being 12 metres deep here, we churned up the silty sea floor with its three metre diameter propellers, followed by a final party piece called a stern up flick. What's a stern up flick? So I just go stern up and I'll quickly spin around. Spin around to drop in the direction. Okay, is it like a, okay, spin the front around. Yep. Slam the brakes on. Like Handbrake turn. turn, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, everyone, we're ready. On. Yeah. Yep. Oh yeah, check that out. Whoa! Oh, I can feel the props, props spinning as well. Oh, that is wicked. I see what you mean when you say you feel you should pay Ports of Auckland for this job. Don't say that the boss is here. <laughs> All right. You didn't say that. I, I, yeah. This all-electric tug turns harder than a boy racer in Christchurch, and for all the seamen out there, it's 25 metres long and 12 metres wide, has a 6 metre draft and two azimuth thrusters. This gives it a bollard pull of 70 tonnes, which is the same strength of its strongest diesel cousin, and its battery pack is 2.7 megawatt hours in capacity. But in case of emergency, it does have a couple of 1 megawatt diesel generators. And while I've got your attention with this dramatic drone footage of this electric vessel, let me do a cheeky shout out to Ecotricity, which is New Zealand's only carbon zero certified electricity provider. Their prices are competitive and they have great off-peak charging rates for electric cars or tugboats. And Ecotricity's power is sourced only from free-range organic wind, hydro and solar sources right here in New Zealand. So why not jump aboard at ecotricity.co.nz. But now it's back to Sparky which was pulling into dock, allowing us to go exploring below decks with the vessel's engineer. In these panels we have what I call a DC to DC converter. So the battery voltage is not constant. Yeah, that uh, changes with the state of charge of the battery. The state of charge is low of a battery, the voltage is also lower. But the system expects a constant voltage of 1000 volts DC. So each cabinet, each four, we've got four battery packs. Yep. Each battery pack has its own DC to DC converter. So if the battery voltage is 750 volts, for instance, our bus voltage needs to be 1000. So the 
uh, die uh, DC to DC converter is bumping that voltage up electronically and key uh, maintains a constant voltage of 1000. It's a little bit noisy because we have an electric motor going for the wind system. Okay. They're going to shut it down very shortly. All right. There we go. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Oh, so this is it. This is the this is the is top it, of the, the thrusters, right? This is the uh, thruster motor. So this motor actually drives the propeller. Wow. Uh, so our propellers are what they call uh, azimuth. So uh, they, they spin uh, around. So the whole unit sp spins so around too. But this is the actual electric motor that drives the propeller. The propeller spins around its uh, axis. There's drive motors that do that. There's two, two oh, electric motors I that see. actually uh, run only when the thruster needs to be turned. There's actually the, these are actually the, steer, the steering motors of the thruster. So the actual motor is that yeah. big cylinder? Exactly. Okay, and what voltage does it operate at? So uh, that's, that that is uh, 690 volt AC. Okay. Now you say, well, we have a mixture here, of course, of DC and AC, but efficient electric motors run on AC. So this is it, we're standing in a, in a wall of batteries. Correct. Wow. So this is a single battery module component. So we have 2,240 of these batteries on board of the tug. 2,240, yeah. and what's the total well, megawatt hours, not kilowatt hours? The kilowatt hours, uh, well, 2.8 megawatt hours. That's but insane. It is uh, 2,800 kilowatt hours, yeah. But the battery like this, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a dry battery, so you can put it you can like this, you can, you, like. you can put it like yep. that if you, uh, well, it doesn't really matter. And with these batteries, uh, you see uh, they're about the length of this cabinet. There's 28 of these in each string, so there's a lot of redundancy here too. Each string, if, if a string is not working, we still have another nine strings so per battery. It's not going to shut the entire bank down. No, you just it's only that, that string. If there's an issue with one battery, it just shuts that string down and you've still got 90% left of the battery pack and plus we have four battery packs so there's a lot of redundancy. And after exploring Sparky's inner workings from the functional to the comfortable and everything in between, we made our way up to the poop deck to see how this particular electric vehicle recharges. Oh, this is CCS plugs. Yep. Correct. They are a bit larger than your standard CCS because this is the high power charging version. Yep. So what each plug, how much, uh, how many kilowatts does each plug deliver? 350. Each one's 350 yep. kilowatts. Correct. Far out. That's the maximum power. So you're running, you're running these at maximum. Yes. With, is, that, is that how much these cables can handle? Are they cooled cables as well? These cables are cooled. They uh, have a cooling glycol water uh -huh. cooling uh, system. It's a special type of coolant. Um, you can't just put water in that system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is uh, the same they use in underfloor heating and things like that. Yeah, like well, yeah. yeah, this is it's a, a, a bit a different. A bit chunkier, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but correct. Uh, so it is what I call CCS, same as you said already. Uh, uh, same system. Uh, it's just adapted for uh, for uh, for our version of uh, the electric. How often do you yeah. charge? Uh, well, depends. If the vessel is in full operation, we'll be charging every day, okay. uh, at least twice. It, it's, it's hard to say because the shipping is not always constant. Sometimes you've got lots of ships in one day, other times you only have a few. Uh, right. So like today is not a very busy day until the evening. So let's say uh, we will be charging, for instance, now we still have 78% uh, left, so we only used about 12% yeah, set of yeah, charge. Yeah. You might have seen that, yeah, I saw that. on the uh, screen. So we haven't used that much. What we actually did is the equivalent of almost one shipping move. And how long would it take to charge this if it was at, uh, at say, 20%? If it's 20%, uh, we, we will be able to charge it in one hour and 40 minutes. That's all right. Yeah. Awesome, thank you very much for showing me this. And there you have it, that's Sparky, not only New Zealand's first, but the world's first full-sized all-electric tug. It's fast, it's clean, it's efficient, it's cheap to run, and it's just a sign of things to come.